I'm about to blow your mind. All right, listen up, bitches. The Halo 5 trailers are the best Halo parodies I've ever seen. Don't believe me? Look. <laughs> it just... What? boulders. So, anyway, level design in video games is, as one might expect, one of the most important parts of the development process. But how do levels get designed? Do developers come up with the designs from the ground up with no framework? Well, not usually. Many great level design companies approach the levels from the standpoint of architecture. Now, when you think about it, this makes sense. The way that people move through and view a space in video games and real life is usually very similar. Now, there are obviously some video game specific aspects to design, but the core of the experience usually remains the same. Starting with an architectural framework lends a unity of aesthetic function and flow to all the levels in a given experience. Having a similar rulebook that all designers pull from is a useful tool for keeping consistent experience. Experience. Without this similarity, there's two outcomes that often arise. We get shitty maps that look amazing but leave the player with a hollow, unfulfilled boredom as they play, or we get amazing maps that are aesthetically monotone and boring to compete in, and fail to make anyone feel like they're playing a video game. Instead, levels like these often leave you with the feeling of playing some sort of simulation. However, with the functioning idea of architecture, game designers can reach a beautiful harmony of aesthetic appeal and functionality. Bungie, the studio behind Halo 1, 2, and 3, not only had a functioning idea of architecture, but had a common belief in a type of architecture called Brutalism. Most brutal, brutal, brutal. Now, Brutalism is a modern style of architecture with a deliberate plainness and crudity. It often emphasizes straight lines, concrete, and steel. It's a very, as the name would imply, brutal and straightforward form of architecture, usually designed with use and function in mind over looks. Now, in Bungie's Halo games, the common belief of Brutalism between all the designers creates an amazing unity between all early Halo maps. Unlike the miserable, clustered, unfocused, copy-pasted, uninteresting, uninspired, cop-out, sold-out, phoned-in, drawn-with-one-hand, corporately bland, depressing, and all-around absolutely shit maps, the 343, the company behind Halo 4 and 5, seem to be shitting out of their corporate assholes. Wow, who wrote this? this is this... you think it's a little harsh? I don't know, okay, this... What is this? So first, let's look at what can make a bad map that doesn't have concrete design philosophy. First off, let's start with the simple. We can just look at the common complaints people have about any level. Maps that are too gray and monotone are often a problem. Even if you have a well-designed space, at the end of the day, if the visual design is lacking, at a base level, no one will want to play. The second problem that often comes up is maps with clear design flaws. Maps where one side is clearly advantageous or has a clear high ground. Maps where certain weapons or certain positions, having certain loadouts is just always better. Outside of the obvious ugly levels or levels where it's just easier to get kills though, there's other more subtle problems that are harder to detect. A map can be colorful, interesting, and well balanced throughout, but still feel hollow because of what we'll call the pachinko problem. Yes. Yes, just fall. <laughs> just oh, oh, oh my god! Are you fucking kidding me? Now, just think of a pachinko machine. Now, in a pachinko machine, a ball randomly bounces around a board of pegs. It inevitably ends up in a place that has no relation to where the ball started. This concept in a negative way can apply to a lot of maps. In many maps like this, the player is the ball and the map is the pegs. A glorious endless sea of brown chest-high walls that span the furthest reach of the foreseeable horizon as a great Activision sun rises to blind your beautiful, glistening gamer eyes. Now these kind of levels are a problem because they inherently destroy flow and also take a lot of the game out of playing the game. Here's what we mean. Let's look at Crossfire from the new Halo 5. It's a perfect example of a pachinko level. And before people argue that this map is supposed to be a training map, or the simplicity is part of the design, let's look at a map that is simple, but good. Hang em High from Halo 1. This map has a bottom floor that is very similar design to Crossfire in the sense that it has a simple geometry and a pretty basic floor plan. But let's look at how this is different from Crossfire. The architecture of the higher floors stops players from wandering straight forward from the moment of first spawning. Hang em High naturally draws players to the higher floors to get a strategic advantage of the battlefield eliminating the mindless wandering that happens on oversimplified maps, like Crossfire. Crossfire is a great example of the pachinko effect because without any real structure to draw players in, players are left to run between boxes in the direction of their enemies. Simplifying the combat to the point where getting kills is just a matter of how long does it take you to mindlessly run forward into an enemy, shoot, 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 die, and repeat. 
It's fine to have randomized pachinko elements, I can hang them high. It can add variety and variability to the level design, but having an entire level laid out like this leads to arbitrary, unfocused experiences. This is where a functioning idea of architecture would help. By creating a map that has interesting fixtures to go to and structures that let players fight in environments that actually have an impact on gameplay, rather than just a rudimentary physics plane to walk around and occasionally kill a dude. It's almost like this Halo 5 level was designed by a single-minded, shitty guy with shitty ideas. Maybe some sort of intern. <sighs> Let's move on to another Bungie-made Halo and another type of map and see what it can tell us more about architecture and level design. We're going to compare Bungie's Halo 3 Guardian map to 343's Halo 4 Haven map. Both are small maps that are go-tos for small team gameplay and matchmaking. The intentionality and clarity of design, however, is much clearer in Bungie's Guardian. First off, the areas in the stage are much more functional. There are areas that work as combat breaks or areas for players to get around without being in the line of fire to better foster mobility around the map. Focal points, or areas that fighting will naturally gravitate to, are used to move the game along and make the combat fast. It's important to note that most of the areas on Guardian function as interchange areas. These are areas that let players move all around the map and are not simple staircases like Haven. They function as not just places to go up and down, but places to move all around the map and a focal point where combat can occur. An interesting environment that feels and looks good and has an overarching theme that really brings the player into the map and the gameplay is the end result of a solid theming with architecture. Haven doesn't have this, it's just two sides of a map that lead to a center. There's no interchange, no strategy, you just walk down a big hallway. That's it. Also, Guardian uses the idea of symmetry rather than the definition to build a map. You need relative symmetry so that one side isn't just better than the other, but you can't have everything be completely symmetric, like in Haven, which has perfect literal symmetry. It's better to have the map functionally work as if it's symmetrical, but not literally. An example would be the grav lifts in Guardian. One shoots players a lot further than the other, but the goal of getting players from the edge of the map to the midline is completed with both. It's important that maps are both functional and fun. Arguably, Haven is a functional map. It lets people kill each other in a close proximity environment while playing Halo. It fulfills all the checkboxes you want in a Halo level, but it's not fun. Guardian is fun. It's engaging and has areas besides the center that are useful and interesting to visit or at least walk through to look for guns or opponents. Haven is literally several hallways and staircases with a center area. I can't think of a more boring map from a gameplay standpoint, an architectural standpoint, or an aesthetic standpoint. Haven, while trying to clearly achieve the same goals as Guardian, is infinitely worse. It forces players to just run through hallways in order to get to a central focal point. Haven is like a pachinko machine on crack. It's like a funnel. It just pushes you through small corridors just to shit you out into the middle. Again, shoot, shoot, die, repeat. Nobody wants that. It's not fun. It's about as linear as an open map can be. In Guardian, however, you have multiple focal points on the map. The main one is obviously the center, but combat on Guardian flows around the map, and you'll find yourself engaging enemies in a lot of areas. And while you may still find yourself doing this in Haven, it's more so that you're killing each other on your monotonous morning commute to the center, rather than from actual fluid, expressive combat. Now, an important part of architecture is flow. What are people using this space for, and what are their intentions going to be? Many of these negative map changes come about as the result of the removal of the gun spawns in multiplayer. The gun spawns were a way to incentivize movement to certain areas of the map over others. It gave the designers a chance to direct the flow of the game towards or away from certain areas, and gave players more consideration besides just where do I go to shoot the other guy faster. It gave a variation of paths to be taken by the player, and diversifies where people end up and assures that the game isn't just an endless series of sprinting towards the action. Now that the gun spawns are gone, players have only one incentive for movement in the level, where the enemy is. That's much more narrow and much harder to control of a parameter for level design. It limits the creativity and diversity of experience that you can design into your levels. When the player comes in, having half designed the level, you lose control. It's just a fact. In the end, here's the point. Anyone can check off boxes to make sure their map is designed well. It needs to look good, have strong theming, be built in an interesting location. But if the area itself is not creatively built, just like Crossfire is just a bunch of boxes, well-colored, well-themed boxes, then it will fail to intrigue players as an actual interesting space to have a combat in. Structure is important. Maps are not supposed to be replicas of what we see on a real-life battlefield. They're supposed to be a well-engineered version of what we perceive the battlefield or location to look like. Maps like Crossfire often fail to entertain because Crossfire looks like a paintball course. Boring, oversimplistic, and rudimentary. It lacks the real-life thrill of paintball because it's not real, there isn't any adrenaline because it's a video game. Maps like Crossfire fail to utilize everything in the designer's toolbox to craft an amazing experience. 
A video game map can be anything, because the limitation isn't reality or what can actually exist, it's what the designers can create. But if the designers don't have a functional idea of architecture, of flow of movement, of focal point and utility, of incentive of movement through your space, then you'll find that it's really hard to build anything besides the bland representation of what things look like in the real world. Instead of giving us something that is a cool, flowing, futuristic adaptation of a paintball course, we just kinda get a paintball course. In the end, having a clarity and breadth of design and keeping all of your design options open is what keeps maps focused, fun, and diverse. When you start to lose these individual focuses and structures, the level design is what lags and suffers. I'll see you guys next time. Whole dark room gun to their head. Are you anticipated for Halo 5? You're frothing. The game knows where to focus. We've seen zombie stories before, and at this point, no one really cares about the machination of the zombies and how they work.